So I wanted to uh, work on uh, the volume of the arm. It's easy if you look when we look at the arm. If we divide the arm in in um, in two big segments, that upper arm, right? And uh, here I'm going to have the joint, and this is the forearm, right? And we see how the upper arm and the forearm have are at an angle, right? That's called carrying angle. The arm and the, the upper arm and forearm are not along a straight axis. There's a change of angle between here and here, which is the normal the normal uh, uh, angles that we find in the arm. The same the same way we find this carrying angle in the legs, right? It's called carrying angle. Very important. Um, so now here we have the deltoid, right? Over here like this, right? And the pectoralis here like that, right? So we can block in very quickly the trapezius, right? Here, I have the bicep like this, right? And uh, I always thinking, always thinking, how are these volumes developing three-dimensionally? In the forearm, I will have, from the front, I have two main muscular groups. One, this is the, ha the hand, and this is the thumb, right? One goes from the upper third, actually the lower third of the upper arm, down to about halfway down the length of the arm. And then the muscle here, this muscle here is called brachioradialis because it goes from the brachi arm to the radius, brachioradialis. So now the tendon gets long here and then it ends up here, right? That's where it ends, at the end of the radius. So this muscle here is this, right? See that? That muscle is a flexor. So we have three flexor in the arm. We have um, the arm like this. This is the arm, upper arm, forearm, right? And the bicep goes from here to here, right? Here like that. The brachialis, which is this. This is the brachialis right here, right? And it's a muscle that's under. Yeah, you don't see it here. It's under the bicep and it's, it's here, right? Goes from here to here. The brachioradialis goes from here to here. So we have one, two, three. Make sense? So one starts high in the in the shoulder and ends up uh, uh, high in the, in the radius. One starts middle in the humerus and ends up high in the ulna. The other one starts low in the humerus and ends up low in the radius. So, but one flex is like this, right? One like this and one like this. Make sense? So, I mean, you can still, one of these muscles missing, you can still flex the arm, but they kind of go more because one, one goes here and one goes here and one goes here, right? So. One, two, three. So one is more pulling this way, one is pulling this way, one is pulling that way, right? So, um, so that so that you know, right? Now, um, therefore, we can divide this the forearm, right? Which we have seen this the, the, the forearm. We drew it like this, right? Starting with a con ground section, and then. Uh, um, ended up with a two by four, right? Because this is like more square, right? This is more like two by four, and this is a round section. So that that brings me very close, brings me very close to the actual shape of the arm, right? And then, so once I have that, now I can see that this portion here of the arm is the brachioradialis, and the, here instead I have another group of muscle that flex the hand and the fingers. So this muscle here are flexor of the fingers and flexor of the carpus, flexor of the, of the wrist here, right? And uh, this muscle here side doesn't flex the hand, flexes the forearm. So um, the muscle here eventually, if, if you want, they take uh, the name, um, just to explain you the complexity, right? So I have now, um, Forearm like this, right? Upper arm like this, right? Um, the muscle that start from here um, 
this is brachyradialis goes to here, right, to the radius, and therefore flexes the radius, not a hand. The muscle that go from here, right, down to here are these, or this tendon in here. And um, there is, so it's a group, this is a group of muscle, right? If I break them down, right, if I break them down, um, and these are only the superficial muscle because we also have two layers of flexor of the finger. So now let's look only at the superficial muscle, right? I have a muscle starting from here, from, from this, this condyle here, this bump in here we have here, right? This muscle start from here and go down this way like that. Uh, these are called epicondylar muscle, right? Because they start from the medial epicondyle, right? Um, actually, these are called epitrochlear muscle, but let's, let's, not, let's not go there, let's not go there. So this is now uh, a muscle that I told you, I just told you, these are the flexor. Now I tell you, except for this one. <laughs> This one is called pronator teres. Pronator teres means it's a muscle, a round muscle pronates the arm. So if you, it, it does a little bump in here, a round bump. That's what they call teres. Teres being round, pronator teres. And it's up here, like this, right? Now from here, I have a muscle that goes to this side. I got just draw, uh, just a line, right? Goes to this side of the hand, right? And it goes here. So this is a flexor. And the name of this is flexor carpi radialis, meaning flexes the carpus from the radial side. This one here, there's another one on the other side, one in the middle, one on the other side here. It, it does the same thing, but via the ulna. So flexor, carpi, ulnaris. Make sense? That makes, now if you I tell you, remember this, flexor, carpi, ulnaris, say, oh, come on, really? This time of the day? And then, but, but if you understand what that is, does, what that's for, that makes sense. It's very, so the Latin name, the names for the muscle are very pragmatic. They're not fancy at all. So in the middle though, I have a muscle that goes down like this, right? And this does not attaches on the on the on the on the bone. Attaches on this a thick ponorotic fascia in the hand here, that covers the whole hand in here. And and uh, it's this this muscle here. If you do if you do this, you should have it right. But this is a vestigial muscle, so about twenty five percent of the population do not have it. And this is called palmaris longus, meaning the long muscle of the palm of the hand. And what it does, it's a thin muscle that goes in between here, these two, it comes down like this, and it helps do this. Apparently, it's a muscle that was developed, this, now, now we're losing it, to reinforce the grip on the trees when we were primates sleeping on the trees, right? Uh, or holding on to the branches. It's an extra muscle that reinforces the grip because um, it's in the middle. It does not attach on the bone because in the middle here, we have the flexion of the fingers. So it will be in the way. So it goes to the surface. It goes to the surface. Going to the first surface is gonna be a strong muscle, but not as strong as those that hatch on, on the bone. Make sense? So here, we have the carpal tunnel, right? The carpal tunnel is right here. So uh, uh, there's so many muscle that when this pool palmar is long, we say, can I get, no, no, man, just find your own, find, find another story. We, just, we're too crowded, look at us, right? And it, so then the device of nature was like, okay, let's build it on top and then get it onto the, onto the fascia or the palm of the hand, right? So, but now if I look at this in this term, I look at this volume here, right? And it's directed toward this. This volume here instead, see that, develops here and stops stops here the in terms of volume and you see it on this side here this is much bigger compared to that make sense right so um so now here what we do we have the brachia bra bicep here right brachialis here and then we draw the conical shape here like this tapering conical shape 
Here, on the side of the thumb, we block in the brachioradialis, and on the side of the um, ulna, we block in the flexors, like that, right? So, um, when you look at, uh, um, when you look at the um, arms and how these muscles are developed, see that? These are the two groups, right? So this is the brachioradialis. This is the flexor of the hands and fingers, right? And with the, uh, the, the hand in supination, you have this bump developing more than this bump in here. And it's on the side. When the hand is halfway between supination and pronation, as this moves, that muscle follows the thumb. And now this muscle goes slightly across, overlapping, right, over that. When the hand is in full supination, then the muscle not, not parallel anymore, because still follow the thumb. And now it could cast diagonally through the forearm. Make sense? So when I do this, right, I see this, see that? This here, now I do this, now it's going to go into that, see that? And then this now goes completely across. Make sense? So it will change the shape of, of the arm and then it, 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 it helps to understand um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the little subtleties of the, of the figure in, in various poses, right?